Hello, beloved. King Josiah holds a Passover and then is killed in battle with Necho, the king of Egypt. We'll hear about it in our reading today from Second Chronicles. I'm Pastor Steve Billings, and today is Monday of the 17th week after Pentecost, September 16th, 2024. Let's begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 116, beginning at verse 1. I love the Lord, because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompassed me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 849 from Lutheran Service Book, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Praise the One who breaks the darkness with a liberating light. Praise the One who frees the prisoners, turning blindness into sight. Praise the one who preached the gospel, healing every dread disease, calming storms and feeding thousands with the very bread of peace. Praise the one who blessed the children with a strong yet gentle word. Praise the one who drove out demons with a piercing two-edged sword. Praise the one who brings cool water to the desert's burning sand. From this well comes living water, quenching thirst in every land. Let us praise the Word incarnate, Christ who suffered in our place. Jesus died and rose victorious, that we may know God by grace. Let us sing for joy and gladness, seeing what our God has done. Let us praise the true Redeemer, praise the One who makes us one. Today's reading is from the second book of Chronicles, the 35th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem, and they killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. And he set the priests in their charges, and encouraged them to the service of the house of the Lord, and said unto the Levites that taught all Israel, which were holy unto the Lord, 
put the holy ark in the house which Solomon the son of David, king of Israel, did build. It shall not be a burden upon your shoulders. Serve now the Lord your God and his people Israel, and prepare yourselves by the houses of your fathers after your courses, according to the writing of David, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon his son. And stand in the holy place according to the divisions of the families of the fathers of your brethren, the people, and after the division of the families of the Levites. So kill the Passover, and sanctify yourselves, and prepare your brethren, that they may do according to the word of the Lord by the hand of Moses. And Josiah gave to the people of the flock lambs and kids, all for the Passover offerings, for all that were present, to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand bullocks, these were of the king's substance. So all the service of the Lord was prepared in the same day, to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings upon the altar of the Lord, according to the commandment of King Josiah. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, and the feast of unleavened bread seven days. And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet. Neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, and the priests and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover kept. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish, by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with thee, thou king of Judah? I come not against thee this day, but against the house wherewith I have war. For God commanded me to make haste. Forbear thee from meddling with God who is with me, that he destroy thee not. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. And the archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Have me away, for I am sore wounded. His servants therefore took him out of that chariot, and put him in the second chariot that he had, and they brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in one of the sepulchres of his fathers. And all Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. And Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and the singing women spake of Josiah in their lamentations to this day, and made them an ordinance in Israel, and behold, they are written in the lamentations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our support and defense in every need, continue to preserve your church in safety, govern her by your goodness, and bless her with your peace. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we remember and thank God for his servant Cyprian of Carthage, pastor and martyr. Listen to this from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. Cyprian was born toward the beginning of the third century in North Africa, possibly in the city he would later serve as bishop, Carthage. His birth name was Thasius, but after being converted to the Catholic faith by a presbyter named Cyprian, he honored his father in the faith by taking his name. Before his conversion, he had been an orator and teacher of rhetoric, quite like another famous North African, St. Augustine, would be years later. Cyprian was converted when he was approximately 35 years old, receiving the grace of holy baptism. Only a short time later, he was made a deacon and then ordained a presbyter. About A.D. 248, he was acclaimed the Bishop of Carthage. This rapid rise in churchly office was not without some significant opposition, however, and for years people murmured against him for it. During the persecution under Emperor Decius, he fled Carthage. He returned when the storm had ended and then had to deal with the aftermath. What should be done for those Christians who had lapsed in fear during the persecution? Yet now, in repentance, begged readmission to the church. Cyprian walked a middle way between severe strictness and simply ignoring what they'd done. He helped forge a penitential discipline that would welcome them back as members of the church and yet only fully restore them after they had given suitable demonstration of their faithfulness to Christ. St. Cyprian wrote many important theological works. His treatise on the unity of the Catholic Church remains a great classic. There he insists that no one can have God for his father who does not have the church as his mother, and that there simply is no salvation outside the Church of Christ. He also wrote a fine treatise on the Lord's Prayer. After Tertullian, he was one of the chief forgers of the Church's Latin theological vocabulary. In AD 256, a new persecution broke out under Emperor Valerian. Popes Stephen I and Sixtus II both fell to martyrdom. When the persecution spread to North Africa, Cyprian was among those who simply refused to sacrifice to the emperor. In A.D. 258, he was arrested and finally beheaded. His only response to the sentence of death was, Deo gratias, that is, thanks be to God. He stripped his own clothes off, put on the blindfold, and stretched out his neck for the sword. Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your servant Cyprian boldness to confess the name of our Savior Jesus Christ before the rulers of this world and courage to die for the faith he proclaimed. Give us strength always to be ready with a reason for the hope that is in us and to suffer gladly for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude today, as always, with Luther's morning prayer. Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. 
and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved. Thank you.